Good morning, Zeo here. And today we're going to be continuing our uh, thing into Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft, uh, you know, our versus thing. And today we're going to be talking about the devs, the lore, the story, and things of that nature. So, go ahead and grab yourself some coffee, sit back, relax, like, subscribe, follow, all that good jazz, and uh, let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> When it comes to the devs, you have a um, quite different sets of people, right? <laughs> um, I'm not really sure how to put it. It's like night and day almost. You've got the Square Enix, um, uh, Square Enix, uh, Final Fantasy 14 devs. You got the Blizzard World of Warcraft devs, and um, just how they handle themselves, how they present themselves, how they handle the community, are two different things, right? Um, and this is, of course, another thing that Blizzard needs to look at. This is a big problem for them, and um, they really, really, really need to fix that, for crying out loud. So, what do I mean? Well, it's simple. The Blizzard devs will say, we hear you. We understand. We think, you know, we, we, we'll look into it. And that's it. That, that's, that's all that's going to happen. They're, they're never actually going to do right um their communication with the player base is atrocious uh back in the day back when they actually had real community managers who actually wrote blue posts and things like that you know we had people who communicated with us they listened to us they they took you know the player's feedback to heart and actually attempted to do things that of course was before active blizzard uh, activision showed up you know the cancerous thing that is activision uh <laughs> But yeah, so since then, you know, there have been cutbacks at Blizzard and all this other stuff. We don't really get blue posts like we used to when they do. They just highlight some things and boom, that's it. And um, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's 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 the that's how it is now these days. However, over on Squeenix side of things. Um, things are a bit different, right? Uh, Yoshi P and the team really care about this game. They care about the player base and they listen to people, right? You know, they, they take in things, they take in suggestions. They'll be like, oh, you know, never really thought about that. And actually, you know, instead of trying to give you this philo philosophical answer as to this, that, and the other, you know, they're just straight up blunt with you and it's like never really thought about that we may have to look into it and then you know they may do that they'll do that and then they 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 may do something or they may not and you know they're very you know communicate a lot with the player base and all this other stuff which is why so many people in the player base you know really look up to these people or um, not um, look up to um really <sighs> I can't think of the word. Anyway, you know, they they speak fondly of them, right? So what are we looking at right now? We're looking at the Mel Vieira. So um, why are we looking at the Mel Vieira? The Mel Vieira is, uh, there. there's two races that they came out with. I think it was um, in Stormblood. And, um, oh, well, actually, this tells me. <laughs> Stormblood. And they were gender-locked races, right? You had the Vieira, which were female. And then you had uh, the Rothgar or Hrothgard. I'm saying that's so wrong. Anyway, who were male, right? They they were counterparts to one another. One was male locked, one was female locked. Does it change anything in the way of jobs and other stuff you have access to? No, absolutely not. When it comes to character creation, they do have some individual stats here, like some some starting stats that will vary depending on what you've you've picked and it's not based on male or female it, it's based off of a, a different characteristic but um for the most part it's negligible and doesn't really mean anything even you know e even at um <clears throat> in game and stuff and I, I know this this is a post from pc gamer about what race you should pick for and the suggested jobs for them and stuff but you can do anything with anybody and it it really doesn't make that big a big of a difference it really doesn't anyone you talk to who actually plays the game knows a lot about it they're gonna be like 
character creation, you know, making your characters purely a cosmetic thing. The the stats, I mean, unless you really, really, really need to min-max something to play Dark Knight or something, and it, it just makes you feel better, there's no reason for it, right? So, um, these were gender-locked races, and they came out and said, you know, they're going to be gender-locked. We have no plans whatsoever to do anything about that, right? They came out, just told the player base, that's what's happening, right? Um... I'm running low on storage. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> um, yeah, you should probably do that, but not while I'm recording PC. Sorry, and, and I've got something rendering in the background. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll close you out for now. And, uh, we'll, we'll come back to you. How's that? Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Not cutting it out. You can listen to me talk to my PC. Anyway. So they, they said they had no plans to actually make a counterpart to them in the opposite uh, gender, right? You know, there's, they're not going to be female uh, Hrothgar. There's not going to be male Viera. And, uh, you know, when it comes to lore, naturally, there is a counterpart to them uh, when, it, when it comes down to lore. Because this, this video is also about lore and stuff, so we'll get into it right now for a bit. Um... You know, when it comes down to it in Final Fantasy XIV, Mel Vieira exist. They're very uncommon, but they exist, right? You know, they're, they're there. There's not a whole lot of lore to it because this is where Final Fantasy XIV kind of fails a little bit and it's in the lore department. They have lore, but it's it's sparse, right? You know, um, it, but this leads me into where the devs listen. People want Mel Vieira. It's just that simple. People really, really, really want Mel Vieira. It, it's been the talk of the town since their inception of being put into the game as an actual playable race. This next expansion in Walker, guess what we get? Mel Vieira. The devs listened. You know, the devs are like, you know what? I know we said we didn't have plans to. We were not going to make a Mel version of this, but the player base really, 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 really wants it. We'll make it a thing. We'll make it happen. We'll find a way to make it happen. And then they did, right? They they went and did it. Over on World of Warcraft, though, with Blizzard, we get statements like, you think you do, but you don't, when it came to Classic WoW, right? And then, you know, later on, they apparently changed their thought process on it because then they did a cease and desist and shut down NOS, the most popular classic private server out there and then a few years later we had wow classic and um, you know if this doesn't speak a lot to why blizzard needs to rethink how it does things i don't know what else does but their biggest expansion their biggest launch in like the past six or seven years at this point has been the re-release of a 15 year old version of their game that has been the biggest Thing they have done in years and um blizzard really you should you you would think after that you would understand you know maybe we should actually you know listen to our players a little bit more maybe they're more in touch with what they actually want than what we think they want right it's not going to happen um apparently it might now given how things are going at this particular moment. But, you know, that, that's the kind of thing we get feedback we get from Blizzard these days. It's they're, they're telling us, you don't want that. You don't really want that. We want you to do this. Hey, look at this big new thing we've done. We've put in all these hours and then nobody uses it, right? Um, when it, We should talk about that in all the mechanic stuff and, you know, features and things like that. But, you know... Blizzard has this horrible problem these days with listening to the customer, right? Um, you know, I, I'm a very big proponent of the customer is never right, <laughs> if that makes sense, because I've worked, uh, you know, in the customer service and a good chunk of the time the customer is wrong. They have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, when it comes to video games, it's a little bit of a different story because customers know what they want. And, you know, if the devs don't want to listen to it, that's that's their decision, right? Um, you know, when it comes to games, games are more of an art form than anything, and I would classify them as such. Um, 
but yeah so when when you go ahead and uh when it comes down to it it's the developers you know vision right you know what they want the game to be and that's what the game is going to be and there's nothing wrong with that at all um but when it comes to mmos there's got to be somewhat of a give and take if if the player base really wants a particular thing maybe the developer should think about doing that particular thing right and um if you guys can hear the knocking i am so sorry because uh somebody is knocking on my thing and uh apparently they can't take the silence as a go away <laughs> mm. anyway so you know that's that's a big thing with blizzard they they can't listen they don't listen they don't want to listen uh you know they don't want to do things that you know players really want it's like almost they have an aversion to it if the players really want a particular thing they're going to do the opposite and we're going to talk a lot back when we get into the whole garrison housing and all this other stuff we won't do it in this video but anyway when it comes to lauren's storytelling right Blizzard has the hand up on lore. Uh, you know, World of Warcraft is so full of lore. There's so much lore that it is, you have to like, just, it's going to, if you're new into it and you want to learn the lore, sit back, <laughs> grab yourself some coffee and get to reading because it is going to be a very, very, very long thing for you to go into and start doing because there are so many sources for material from the game to books to cinematics to things that the developers have said themselves and, you know, different things. And, and luckily we have people out there who take the time to explain the lore in on, on things like YouTube, right? There, there are, you know... You, YouTube people, uh, content creators who have just made an entire name for themselves explaining the lore of World of Warcraft. Um, because it needs to be explained, especially for new players. You know, you've got all the games. You've got Warcraft, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, every expansion, all the books. Final Fantasy XIV, on the other thing, hand, it's got lore. It's just not as expansive, right? Uh, this is one of the you know if you're looking for lure heavy it doesn't have it but it does have lure right you know um but the best part about it is you don't have to go externally looking for this lure <laughs> for the most part you don't have to go externally looking for this lure other than maybe what happened during 1.0 that that's about the only bit that you may have to externally look for and there's a great documentary about all this too by the way uh, you know, when, when they came in, they shut it down and redid it. And I can't think of the name of it, but you should probably go check that out if you're really, really interested in that sort of thing. But as for storytelling, Blizzard sucks at storytelling, right? So yeah, I needed a copy refill and to address the door. <laughs> uh, anyway. Life of a parent. It's busy. Anyway, so storytelling, right? Blizzard sucks at storytelling, as I was getting to. Um, why do I say this? Do they, do they really just bad at it? It's, you know, of course this is a matter of opinion, right? When it comes to Blizzard, this is how you get the story of World of Warcraft. You play Warcraft 1, 2, 3, get into World of Warcraft, or read some books. You play World of Warcraft, now follow along, because if you want to continue following along, you're going to need to find external books, cinematics, and other things that have been done or said throughout the last 15 to 16 years, and simultaneously play World of Warcraft in order to get the full story and understand what is happening. Um, one of the more notable things in recent history that I can think of where I was just like, what the hell, uh, was when Jaina had completely disappeared from the story and then came back in a flying fucking ship during the Battle of Lordaeron, and I'm like, what the fuck? What happened? Where has she been this whole time? Well, there was a book you were supposed to go read to get all that information, right? And they sort of went through it with also a very short three or so minute cinematic with the him and, and Jaina before the expansion launch that she... If you're paying attention to the words and get the, the meaning of this, that, and the other, you kind of get a shortening of what's going on, that sort of thing as well. And that is a problem with World of Warcraft. If you can't tell your story inside your game completely, 
people are confused and they don't know what the hell is going on. Luckily, nobody really plays World of Warcraft for the story, apparently. Um, no, seriously, there are people who do play it for the story, but, uh, you know, I'm being a little hyperbolic right there. Uh, yeah, but, you know, when it comes to following the story of World of Warcraft, you've got to get it through an external source a lot of the times, just because it's not all told there. Uh, the other thing, of course, when it comes down to it is it feels like you don't matter <laughs> for the most part, right? Your character doesn't matter when it comes to World of Warcraft. You're there. You're the unnamed champion who helped so-and-so do a thing because you never get the final blow. You never actually get recognized as anything. You get talked at rather than to throughout the entire years of the game. Like, seriously, you, you never really, you know, you, you go to it and it was so-and-so and -so in unnamed and, and a group of unnamed champions, right? A, a group of champions stormed the Black Temple or, you know, stormed um, um, Arthas or, or, or did this, that, and the other. And with the help of the champions, they were able to do this and they were able to stop Deathwing and they were doing... It, it's never about you, right? And, uh, you know, not to sound like word that I can't think of right this second, but when it comes to something like an MMO, an RPG, that sort of thing, the story should have something to do with you, right? Uh, you know, there, there should be things about it. When it comes to Final Fantasy XIV, that all changes. It, it was a very, very different experience because when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV, it is a self-contained thing. Final Fantasy XIV, like all the other Final Fantasies, they're self-contained games, right? Uh, but Final Fantasy XIV, of course, will take things from other Final Fantasies and somehow congeal them together into a working world. <laughs> you know, the story, the lore, it's all right there in the world for you to discover and go through with the MSQ. And rather than being talked at, like uh, Champions of Azeroth, you know, we need to do this. It's, you know, your name and, and talking to you, right? So it, whatever your name happens to be, you know, it's in the text box and they're talking to you even, you know, in these cutscenes and all this other stuff. Um, I wonder if I can bring up a cutscene to, to show real quick. Is, is that something I can do? Um, Let's see, uh, let, let's look, let's look, final, uh, fantasy, yeah, I was looking for my screenshot folder, which I couldn't find, by the way, <laughs> uh, XIV, uh, cut, in-game cutscenes, in-game cutscenes, let, let, let's see if we can, we can bring up something and, and maybe, um, I don't want to bring up every single cutscene in the world or anything, um, yeah, I guess that's what we're going to do. See if any of those were in-game player cutscenes. Um, but uh, since my character's not here, I, I can't actually figure out who is who. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious. But um, yeah, they'll sit there and they'll actually talk to your character. Your character gets to know the NPCs, the people of the world. The people of the world get to know the character. Right. They, they get to know who you are. Uh, you know, even if they don't know your name, they'll refer to you as the warrior of light because that's what you are in the game. Um, more drink. But yeah, you know, your character appears in these cutscenes. They're, they're talked to rather than at for the most part. They're animated, um, you know, when animation is appropriate and stuff. Uh, and this is them leaving you to do your things. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. But yeah, this, this of course, is the uh, the award-winning Heaven's Ward uh, expansion. By the way, if you don't know, you can play up to level 60 on Final Fantasy XIV right now. And that includes the Heaven's Ward expansion for free to try it out today so uh i suggest you go do that i do not have a referral code or anything else like that for you to go and use and do that you just have to hop on over there download it and make an account and go from there and your options of course are pc steam or playstation um so go go do anyway <laughs> um but yeah, you know, you, you get talked to, um, with 
essentially when it comes to the story and their their story uh, you know there's cut scenes it's not just walls of text that you have to read that most people just click okay accept go on like they do in world of warcraft and it makes for a much better story it makes for a much better investment in the characters you you get to know these characters especially when you start traveling around with them and things happen and you know you're just talking you know because of this and that among other things and it's it's a great great way of doing these cutscenes instead of wow's talk at the champions champions of azeroth you know that sort of thing you feel more part of the world. You feel more invested in the world. You, you know, you, you sort of actually matter to the game, right? You know, uh, people will actually recognize you after certain things and, and say things, and, and stuff will happen in the game, and it matters. Uh, you know, if something happens, it's reflected in the game, and it's there permanently um you know unlike of course wow <laughs> where things are not so permanent ever but yeah that 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 might be just i don't know anyway um yeah yeah i think that's that's where i'm at uh so and the long and the short of it devs don't listen when it comes to blizzard they listen when it comes to squeenix um uh, you know lore blizzard has plenty of lore they suck at storytelling um final fantasy 14 on the other hand doesn't have as much expansive lore but they're excellent at storytelling um just the way they handle all sorts of things it's just way way better of a thing anyway let me know what you think down in the comments below and i will talk to you later see ya Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.